faith, gathered to hear God's word, to be uplifted and transformed by that life-giving word. And today we also have an additional reason to celebrate, and that is we celebrate the gift of new life through the waters of baptism. And so today we want to extend a special word of welcome to the Anderson family, and we rejoice with them on this day of Josie's baptism. Thank you for being here with us, and thank you for allowing us the great privilege of celebrating with your family what God is up to here in the waters of her baptism. A couple other announcements to highlight or call to your attention. Um, first of all, Adult Forum will be meeting downstairs in the Fellowship Hall at 1015 following our worship service. Also, there will be Bible study this Tuesday at 10 a.m., we are continuing our Bible study on the Lord's Prayer. So 10 a.m. on Tuesday, we invite you to uh, grab a neighbor or a friend and join us for this Bible study. And finally, our youth ages, I believe, 8 through 12, will be going on their annual ski trip on Sunday, February 20th. The sign-up details are found on the back page of your bulletin. If you are interested in attending, that's always really a popular event. Um, please sign up as soon as possible so that we can complete our arrangements for that trip. The rest of the announcements I leave for you to read at your leisure. And at this time, I invite you to please stand and let us sing together our gathering hymn, Holy, 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 hymn number 413. <laughs> I invite you to turn to page 94 in the front of your hymnals for the service of confession and the assurance of God's word of forgiveness and grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit 
that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Most holy God, the earth is filled with your glory, and before you angels and saints stand in awe. Enlarge our vision to see your power at work in the world, and by your grace, Make us heralds of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated, and together let us sing our baptismal hymn, Born in Cry, hymn number 732.
today it is our great joy and privilege to celebrate with Josie's family the wonderful event of God naming and claiming us in the waters of baptism, claiming us as our beloved sons and daughters. As um, their family and their sponsors are coming forward, I invite the congregation to please turn to page 227 in the front of your red hymnals for the service of holy baptism. I want to share. Okay. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and by the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of the saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Josie Jean Anderson baptized into Christ? Tyler and Rachel, if so, please say, we do. As you bring Josie to receive this gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture her in faith and in prayer so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world that God has made, and work for justice and for peace. Tyler and Rachel, do you promise to help Josie grow in the Christian faith in life? If so, please say we do. And sponsors Trevor and Nicole, do you promise to nurture Josie in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help her live in the covenant of her baptism and in communion with the church? If so, please say I do. And people of God here at Trinity Lutheran, do you promise to support Josie and to pray for her in her new life in Christ? If so, please say, we do. I ask all of us together to profess our faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you have set us free from the power of sin and death, and you raise us up 
to live in you. Pour out now your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that she who was washed in the waters of baptism might be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Get her as close as you can. There you go. Josie Jean Anderson, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Didn't even wake up. <laughs> there you go. Good job. Good job. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and through the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth. You cleanse them from sin, and you raise them to eternal life. Sustain Josie with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. And now we will mark her with the sign of the cross. Josie Jean Anderson, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and now marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. At this time, I'm going to call forward one of our acolytes to light her baptismal candle. We are reminded today that Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And today we rejoice with your family as the light of God's love enters into and claims Josie as a beloved daughter of Christ. And we are reminded, um, as we present your family with her baptismal candle, we encourage you that every year on the anniversary of this day, you would relight the candle. And as she grows in years and begins to ask why the special candle, you can share with her what God has done for her here in the waters of her baptism. And as I present your family with her candle, we remember the words of scripture, let your light so shine before others that they might see your good works and give glory to our Father in heaven. Amen. I'm going to hand this to the sponsors. There you go. And now I ask the congregation, let us together welcome Josie with the words found on the bottom of page 231. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Let us welcome our newest sister in Christ, Josie Jean Anderson. Okay, and I'll have you guys follow so we can all get a closer look at our newest sister in Christ. Okay. You're welcome. Congratulations. We do have several gifts along with the baptismal certificate for Josie and for the sponsors, but congratulations and thank you for allowing us to be a part of her special day today. Let us continue the service with the reading of God's word.
The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces, and with two, they covered their feet, and with two, they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. We will read Psalm 138 responsively. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in according with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in according with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
At this time, I'd like to invite the children forward for our children's lesson. And we're going to sit over here today. Good morning. Oh my goodness, you guys sound like you're still sleeping. Are you sleepy today? Let's try that once more. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. I'm excited that you are here today because we have a very special Bible story today. You haven't heard it yet because it's today's gospel reading. But Jesus lived by a lake. Just like us in Minnesota, how many of you in the summertime have gone out in a boat and enjoyed being out on the lake? That's a lot of fun, isn't it? Isn't it cool? Really cool. Well, today Jesus goes out on the lake and he discovers a couple of his friends that he wants to come and follow him. And they are fishermen. How many of you guys like to fish? That's fun, isn't it? Yeah. What do you use when you go fishing? A fishing pole. Yep. Well, back in Jesus' day, they didn't want to catch one or two fish. They wanted to catch hundreds of fish because that was their job. They would then bring the fish to shore and people could buy the fish to, to feed their families. And so back then, the way that they fished and caught hundreds of fish was they used fishing nets. And I happen to have a couple of fishing nets right here. And that's what they used. They would throw them out, and then they would pick them up, and hopefully the fish would get caught in the net. But guess what? When Jesus goes to see his friends, who are fishermen, they hadn't caught any fish. Isn't that a bummer when you go and you spend hours in the water and nothing happens? That's what happened with Jesus' friends, and they were tired. And yet, when Jesus came to see them, you know what he told them to do? Throw their nets over again. And you know what they said? But we did that already. We already tried that. It didn't work. But Jesus said, try again. And so Peter took the net and he threw it over. And guess what happened this time? When they pulled the net up, there were so many fish. It took all of them to get the fish into the boat. So today, wouldn't it be really cool if we could talk about the story and actually have a boat. Well, thanks to our Wednesday after school kids, we do have a boat. And by the way, when I mentioned to them on Wednesday night that I needed them to make me a boat, the first boat that they were gonna draw was the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's not where I was planning my children's lesson to go. <laughs> well, here we have the boat that they came up with. They love the flags, they did such a good idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the boat down here. You guys are going to have to stand up, and we're going to walk over there and actually get behind it so that we're in the boat. So you guys over here, can we walk over there and stand up? There we go. There's the boat. Okay. Very good. All right. I need one volunteer to throw the nets over because that's what they were doing. Assuming I can untangle them here, kind of like Christmas lights. There we go. Would you like to throw the net overboard and see if we catch any fish? And I'll have you do it on this side. Let's see what we, what we uh, catch. So throw them over and then pull the nets back up. <laughs> okay, did we, anybody catch anything? No. Oh my goodness. But then Jesus comes along and what does he tell them? Try it again. So hang on a sec. <laughs> Let's try it again. Ready? Okay, go ahead and throw them. Whoa. Okay. Okay, now this time, haul them back in. Okay, I'm going to help you here. There we go, and haul them back in. There we go. 
And what did we catch? Swedish fish. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? A Scandinavian church getting Swedish fish. It's amazing. <laughs> Isn't that cool? But Jesus told them one more thing. And you know what that was? He told those fishermen to come and follow him and be his disciples. And then he told them, I'm going to make you fish for people. How do you fish for people? That's kind of hard, isn't it? What Jesus was talking about is he wanted us to go as disciples and invite others to come and follow, to be kind to them, to share the good news of Jesus and what God was doing in Jesus. So when Jesus talks about fishing for people, he means that we should shine the light of God's love into people's lives. And we can do that by being kind, by being helpful, by inviting people to come and follow Jesus, by inviting people to come to church with us, all of these different things. So does that sound like something you guys could do? Fish for people? That's a pretty good idea, isn't it? Well, I actually have a little homework assignment for you today. I'm going to give you each a packet of the Swedish fish as a reminder of this story and the reminder that God tells us to fish for people. In each little snack bag are five fish. Two of them you get to eat. Okay? Okay. The other three, what I want you to do is when you see somebody being nice, like maybe you're nice to your brother, or somebody's nice and holds the door open for somebody when they leave church, I want you to take out a fish and give it to them and tell them about this story and say, that was a really nice thing. Thank you for fishing for people. Can you guys do that? So two of them you get to eat. The other three I want you to give away, okay? Sound like a, a plan? Okay, very good. Thank you, assistants, for sharing the boat. Thanks for coming forward, guys. That was great. Did everybody get? Okay. Did you get? There you go. You're welcome. There you go. Good job. You're welcome. I invite you to please stand for the reading of the gospel. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Jesus got into one of the boats the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but we have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and to help them. And they came and they filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees and said, Get away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything 
and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. How many of you have ever had to take lessons to play a musical instrument? Whether that be piano or organ or a band instrument. How many of you remember your parents saying, you have to practice? When I was growing up, my mom, because she was a church organist, made each and every one of her kids take both piano and organ lessons. And what I remember the most about that entire experience was playing scales. Every week during my piano lesson, our teacher would make me start by playing those dreaded scales. And never just once. After about five or ten minutes of playing scales, I would look up at her hopeful that this form of torture was over. But more often than not, when I looked up, she would say to me those dreaded words, one more time, play them one more time. That's what Jesus said to his disciples, one more time. Now Peter had had a long night. He had been out fishing and working, yet despite all of his efforts, all those hours he put into the task, he had been unable to catch even a single fish. Not the kind of fish tales you like to share with your friends, is it? By the end of his shift, he was tired. Peter probably wanted to just go home, sit in his recliner or easy chair with the newspaper and put his feet up. But just as he's about to give up and head home, Jesus walks by and gets into one of his boats. He looks up at Peter and the other disciples and he says those exact same words. One more time. Throw out those nets one more time. Now you have to think that these words probably irritated a very tired Peter. After all, what hadn't Peter already tried? He was tired, and he wanted to quit. And why should he, after all, take advice from a carpenter who knew absolutely nothing about catching fish? And while Peter probably tried in his own way to tell Jesus this, Peter was also gracious enough that even in his tiredness, he and the other disciples did as their master had suggested. And we discover that in the end, trying just one more time made all the difference in the world. Now, not all of us here today are fishermen, but we can all surely relate to how tired and how discouraged Peter must have felt before Jesus came into the picture. After all, who among us has never experienced feeling like you are at the end of your rope? Who among us hasn't experienced trying so hard to do something only to have it fail time and time again? Who among us has never experienced a time in our lives where we simply don't feel strong enough to try one more time? A time when our energy or our strength has been zapped by anger, or guilt, or grief, or depression. But then Jesus comes into the picture. And when Jesus enters, he changes everything, doesn't he? When Peter's strength wavered, Jesus was there. And it was Jesus who helped Peter find the strength to try again until he succeeded. And isn't that the message for us today as well? That when our strength wavers, when we are exhausted, when we have tried everything that we can think of to bring about success, 
Jesus comes into the picture and shares with us the strength and the grace to keep moving forward. That is the wonderful assurance of our faith. As the psalmist puts it so eloquently in verse 3 from our psalm this morning, I called and you answered me, O God, and you increased my strength of soul. And from verse 7, though I walk in the midst of trouble, you, O God, preserve me. You stretch out your hand to deliver me. Today, we lift up and celebrate that powerful gospel truth. When we are tired, when we are in trouble, God hears us. In the moments of our weakness, when we cry out to God, God calls us out to us and touches us with the gifts of his grace. We can depend upon him because when we need him the most, Jesus enters the picture. And we, we do trust that when we reach that point where we feel we cannot do it, we as people of faith can give thanks because we know the one who can. By the grace of God, we are able to throw those nets over and try one more time. And not just try, but also succeed. And we succeed because we know that there is no obstacle in our lives that the grace of God cannot overcome. As Jesus probably told Peter when Peter and the others followed him, you ain't seen nothing yet. I want to end now with another story that talks about the grace of God and the incredible power to persevere. It is a true story. It is an Olympic story for those of you who have enjoyed watching the Olympics the past couple of days. Most of you will probably recognize the name of Dan Jansen. He was a famous speed skater who tried for gold in the Olympic Games in 1984 at Sarajevo, in Calgary in 1988, and in Albertville in 1992. Before one of his races, tragedy struck and his beloved sister died of cancer the day before his race. His tragedy caught the world's attention and everyone was rooting for him the next day as the race began. However, heartbreak continued and he did not win the gold. When Jansen came to the 1994 Olympics, he knew that it would be his last chance to get a gold medal in memory of his sister. He was in two races back in 1994, the 500 meter and the 1,000 meter. First came the 500 meter. Tension mounted as the TV cameras covered the race and they were cheering him on. But once again, tragedy struck as he slipped and finished in a rather disappointing eighth place. And so now he was down to his very last chance. By now, the media had called him the heartbreak kid because he had tried his best, but he had always come up short. As he prepared for his last race, the thousand meter race, he felt the weight of all of his previous failures and disappointments bear down upon him. And he struggled with how to find enough energy to race one more time. He said later that part of him didn't even want to try because sometimes it's easier or tempting to give up than to have to struggle and face failure yet again. But at that moment when his struggle was the greatest, the grace of God kicked in. His family and his friends surrounded him with love and with care and helped rebuild the strength he needed to try one last time. And by the next day, the end of the thousand meter race, not only did Dan have his gold medal, but he also set a new world record for the thousand meter speed skating. 
the power of God's grace lets us move forward, even when it seems it might be our last time. And so in the days of this week and beyond that are to come, if you find yourself struggling at a low point of the day, take a moment and reflect one more time on these incredible words of faith written by the psalmist. I called, and you answered me, O God. You increased my strength of soul. And even when I walked through the midst of trouble, you preserve me, O God, and you stretch out your hand, and you deliver me. One more time. Thanks be to God for answering us even one more time. Amen. Together, let us sing our hymn of the day. Will you come and follow me? And we will sing verses 1, 2, and 5. us pray. Gracious God, today we rejoice as you have gathered us together as your beloved people. We rejoice with you in the waters of baptism and we celebrate the new gift of life given to Josie and to her family. Continue to strengthen her and all of us in our baptisms. Help us to continue to walk with you and follow you and help us in those moments of life when we struggle to indeed be with us to walk with us and to encourage us to keep trying again one more time. We thank you for the gift of your salvation. And today we pray for the healing for those in our midst who in, are in need of your presence to offer that gift of healing. We pray for Joe, for Russell, for Cheryl, for Patty, for Donna, for Jana, and for Joey and for all others whom we name before you, either silently or aloud. Continue to strengthen us on this day and in the days that are to come. We give you thanks and praise for your faithfulness. In the name of Jesus, amen. For our offering, because of COVID, our offering plates are in the back. 
We have also here our uh, children's noisy offering. Um, if you have not um, brought it up early, you're, you are welcome to do so. And let us now sing together our offering response. Let the vineyards be fruitful. he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, the table is ready and all are welcome. You may be seated and our ushers will direct you forward. Will the communion assistants please come forward and kneel at the altar.
Please stand. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, because your pastor has been a little long-winded today, we will sing the first verse of our sending hymn, Here I Am, Lord, hymn number 574. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks. 